Hello Aries. So this is going to be your reading for June 2023. Take only what resonates, leave the rest. Right now we are going to find out what you can look forward to, what you don't see coming, and then I'm going to pull some advice. What does Aries have to look forward to for this month? You are definitely popping out in your own reading. You're going to be in your own element. We do have the Emperor popping out. Okay. You know, this is kind of a sense of realization about something. Hmm. Not the King of Pentacles. You could be dealing with an Aries, a uh, Cancer, Pisces, or you could be dealing with a Capricorn, Taurus, or a Virgo. We have the Two of Pentacles here. There is something that you're trying to balance out. There's something that um, it feels stable, it feels steady, but there's a little of the unknown here. Bottom deck energy we have is the Page of Pentacles. So the Page of Pentacles is wanting to move forward with something, wanting to make plans, wanting to move forward, um, trying to see where you're going to plant your seeds, making plans. I. I know I just said that, but it came again, so I said it again. So with the Two of Pentacles, you're like, how can I move forward with something? I feel like that you've been a little bit perplexed uh, with the Moon card showing up. The Moon card is all about um, unknown, secret surfacing, um, having resolutions finding resolutions um things coming to light that you didn't see before and so i feel like that whatever it is that you are trying to figure out on how to balance since you're trying to balance something you're trying to figure something out possibly collaborating debating back and forth with somebody to see how things are going to work it's like there's some kind of solution that hasn't been met we have the Emperor. I feel like that you kind of pull within yourself and you're like, how can I make this right? How can I make this better? This is what I'm going to tell you, Aries. Okay. If you are collaborating with somebody, if there was another person involved in this equation, it is not meant for you to do it by yourself. If you have somebody there helping you, allow them to help. If you have somebody there at 3.33 on the clock, right when I'm saying this, if you have someone there who is literally involved, then they're allowed to have a say in whatever. You don't have to figure everything out. One thing that I feel, because we have the Seven of Pentacles, Okay, so the Seven of Pentacles is all about knowing that you need to do something differently. You're wanting to put in the work, but you know that you're learning something new. So there is a sense of you needing to know that it's not entirely up to you to control a situation, especially when there's other people involved. They have a say in their own lives. They don't just get interchange, you know, they're not interchangeable, you know. You can't say, okay, I'm going to handle this. I'm going to take care of it all by myself. If there's other people involved. It, it just doesn't work that way. 444 on the clock, right, when I'm saying that. That's going to be, that message is going to be for some of you, but not for all of you. Just kind of take it how it resonates. So with the Seven of Pentacles, there's a new 
thought process. There's something new coming up. It's like, I can do it. I know I can do it, but I have to go around it a different way. There's more than one way to get to a solution. And I feel like that you could be in your head a little bit to figure out, you see how the two paths are together, then they separate and then they go back together. There is, you're trying to find a solution to keep that pathway together or how it can meet back up and head towards the sunset. So there could be a situation that you might have to take a break from in order for you to figure it out. It could also be the case of not appreciating or not knowing what you have until you lose it, okay? And I'm saying that loosely, but sometimes it takes something to be removed out of your life for you to understand how deep you appreciate it. And if you appreciate it that much, you're not going to want to let it go. And so there is a sense of you not wanting to let go of a certain something. So you're trying to figure out how to keep the pathway together. So it's like, okay, I can make this happen, but I have to do it a different way. I have to learn a new thought process. I need to learn something different. And the King of Pentacles is very, and I say very abundant, very prosperous. I feel like that in the long run of what you're looking for, or in the long run of whatever it is that you're seeking, you already have it. And I think that you know that too. But there's still something within you that you feel like you're missing out on something. So it could be a sense of you just needing to go and explore. Go with new possibilities. Go in and see what would happen. And try to make your path work. You know. But I do see you going within and saying, I, I know I need to do something different. But I do see a path, you know, I see two pathways and they're separating for a little bit. But, you know, the illustration says that they're coming back together. But it's still the point of, you know, once again, maybe it's something that you need to remove from your life to see how much you appreciate it. Or just opening up new doors, you know. I mean... Nobody wants to feel like they are, how am I going to say this? It's like, let's say you have the best thing that's going on in your life, right? But you still have this longing for something else. So, you... You, there, there's no such thing as making a mistake, okay? So, you may not be able to get back to, to whatever it is that you leave. But you have to figure out whether it's worth that chance. That's what you have to figure out. You have to figure out if it's worth you leaving something behind in order to fulfill a thirst, and I feel like that, that that's where you're at. It's like, if I leave this, is it worth me leaving it? Because no matter what you do, you're going to have to sacrifice something. There's something that you're going to have to give up no matter what. If you stay where you're at, you're giving up something. If you go forward with something, you're giving up something. So no matter what, you're making some kind of sacrifice. And you can't tiptoe around to see, you know, you can't tiptoe around with honesty. You can't tiptoe around with truth. The moon card being here, it might also signify that you're not being totally upfront about what's going on with you. Trust is everything, you know, trust is everything. And so I do feel like that you're trying to find a different way of going about something in order to keep prosperity and abundance in your life. Now, prosperity and abundance in your life, that could be a person, that could be a feeling, that could be a job, that could be literally money. It could be everything to you. And so I feel like that that's, that could be what you're trying to hold on to. 
because you have like an everything factor but it's like if there's something that you feel like that you're missing then maybe you don't appreciate what you have as much as you think you do you know they're 10 10 on the clock right when I said that so there is a sense of you know if you feel like that there's something better out there for you go investigate but also keep in mind that when you're ready to go back if you ever become ready to go back the possibility there's a strong possibility that what you left behind is going to be lost you just have to you have to weigh those options out and you have to understand that as an adult you know so it's like I'm gonna tell you Aries I have met like the biggest I'm gonna say I'm going to make this go like relationship worthy here. Okay. I'm going to make this go in the direction of relationships. I have met the doggiest of dogs, the players of players, all of that, where they freaked the fuck out when it came to settling down 11, 11 on the clock. Right. When I said that, when it came to settling down, when it came to, you know, releasing something that, was around them for so long, like a certain behavior or, you know, they didn't know why they wanted what they wanted or, you know, it's like they really didn't, it, it's just the fact that they wanted it. There, it didn't have to have a reason or any kind of rhyme or anything like that. It's just, if you ask them straight up, why do you want to be a player? Why do you want to be, you know, going, doing this and doing that, right? The answer was always, I don't know. I don't need a reason. It just feels good. You know, I don't need a reason. And it usually is a reason that they're holding on to that doesn't even truly exist. So that's the whole thing about it right there. But then they meet somebody or they come across someone that changes their entire perspective. And the fear of losing something so good to them. Once that gets put on the burner of possibly sacrificing, it's like it, it no longer is as important. But it always takes something detrimental in order for a person to realize, I appreciate that so much, I don't even want to risk losing it. But guess what? What they have to do to get to that point is risk losing it. I don't understand why that, that happens for some people, but for some people it, it does. So in this case, whatever it is that's going on with you, there could be um, something where you have to just go and explore, weigh your options, take that chance, explain it to who you need to explain it to. Either they're going to wait for you or they're going to say, well, you know what? I can't promise you I'm going to be around. But that is something that they have to decide. You can't make that decision for them. Okay? You can't keep them as an option when they don't deserve that. All right, Spirit. What does Aries not know? What does Aries not see coming? What does Aries not see coming? See? The whole thing that you're scared of is rejection. The rejection card came out first and foremost. So you could be afraid of being rejected or you could be afraid of rejecting or hurting somebody. Look, we have frustration. You're frustrated with the whole thing. I think that you're frustrated because maybe things are not going the way that you want them to. Or somebody didn't do what you wanted them to do. We have the death card. There's going to be a rebirth that happens here. But you have to work through with what you work through. You know. Um, maybe you were a certain way in the past. And, no, and now you realize... I need to be like this. In order to have what I want, this is what I need to be. I feel like that once you realize that we have movement and we have hunger, you're going to move fast on something. You're not going to want to let something go. I think that you're going to be tested on that. And what I mean by that is that sometimes it's an external test. 
because it's like, okay, you might have the possibility of whatever it is that you might be leaving behind, there's a possibility that another door opens up for them or another door opens up for that and gives them an opportunity different. 15-15 on the clock right when I said that. I feel like that whatever it is that you're trying to hold on to, you're going to move towards it pretty quick. But you're going to have to go through something first. And then it's like once you go through something. Yeah, see, we have passion here too. So you have hunger and passion to go towards something. There's some kind of rebirth here where something, a thought process, or you might even be going through some kind of, uh, maybe you're going to quit your job. Maybe you're going to break up your relationship. Maybe you're going to change your mindset. But there's some kind of rebirth happening here that once that death happens, the rebirth is going to start. Like something else is, is coming in quickly. Bottom deck energy we have here is the sadness card though. So there is something that you're going to leave behind and something that you're going to go for. But see, after the sadness card, we have the faith card. You have faith, but here's the anxiety card. And here's the happiness card. It's like, I'm scared to death to go in this new direction, but I'm finding my happiness. And you're going to know deep in your gut. And you're going to have success and growth. I feel like what you don't realize is that once you get over this hump, you're going to have all the happiness that you need. Once you get over this hump, you're actually going to see what you need to see for what it is. I, I don't feel like that you're seeing it for what it truly is. Yeah. So I feel like that you're cleansing out old stuff and new stuff is coming in. And I feel like that that has a lot to do with how you're thinking about things. It's like your whole thought process. I, I see how it's turning around. 1717 17 on the clock right when I said that. All right, Spirit, what advice do you have for my Aries babies? All right, Spirit, what advice? Do you have for my Aries babies? That jumped out, didn't it? Boom, 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 boom. Creator alchemy. That tells me you can take whatever you have right now and you can turn that shit around. That includes whatever it is that you want, you can actually have. But you have to look at what you value. And if you don't value what you have, then guess what? You don't need it. We have you, the muse. Trusting yourself, learning from yourself, learn your own processes without external um, validation. We have manifesting and doing. You're going to be getting what you manifest. It just, just might not be exactly how you thought it would be. We have fall in love with your own story. We have ups and we have downs. Mistakes are not mi mistakes. They are lessons. Okay, you need to keep that in mind. We have creator earth. You could be dealing with an earth sign, Capricorn, Virgo, Taurus, but you don't have to be. But creator earth is um, it's a reminder to stay grounded when you're going through all of the ups and downs. Okay, so for instance, as soon as you think, like, let's say you start a new process, right? As soon as you start getting in your head about something, go distract yourself. If you know that whatever it is that you're getting in your head about, it's not going to be helpful for your fear or for your anxiety, go do something else that, that brings you back. Like, go walk outside. Go step into the sun. Go step into the moon. Like, go do something to distract yourself. Because overthinking anything is not going to do anything but make you long for, for what you think you, quote, unquote, lose. Okay? Bottom deck energy we have here is get back to elemental. 
What did I just say? Go outside. Get into the elements. Get into the elements and bring yourself back to center. All right. So that is what I have for you for the month of June. I am sending you so much love, light, healing, and protection. Have a great day. And I will actually have a great month. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.